Okay, you need to watch this breakdown from Body Bokken because Calvin Robinson told the Church of England this. Stop teaching about diversity, inclusion and equality and get back to teaching about redemption and salvation. But then the Church of England did this. The allegedly cash-strapped Church of England have found a hundred million quid down the back of the sofa to apologise for slavery. The sum was announced by Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, after a commission investigating church investments concluded that some of their wealth was accumulated after initial investments with the South Sea Company. At the time, it traded in slaves. The fund is to pay for a programme of investment, research and engagement and to help communities affected by historic slavery. It seems like so many churches have turned away from focusing on the gospel to focus on the so-called oppressed. Why is that? Well, that's exactly what Pastor Vody Bokum breaks down for us in this video. So we're going to listen to what he has to say. I'm going to add some scripture at the end. Let's get into it. There are those who, who are, are trying to argue from the standpoint of what's called liberation theology. And so liberation theology would argue that, you know, God, no, no, God is on the side of the oppressed. God is always on the side of the oppressed. And he's always working to deliver the oppressed because the world is made up of oppressors and the oppressed, not sinners and the righteous, but oppressors and the oppressed. And if you want to find the side that God is on, you just look at the person who's oppressed or look at the group that's oppressed. And there's the answer to your question. Um, turn in your Bibles with me to another passage of scripture. Just, you know, quickly, just let's look at um, Jeremiah. Let's look at Jeremiah 29. Right? And I know what you're thinking, right? I say Jeremiah 29. You're like, yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11. Nope. <laughs> Not verse 11. We love that though, don't we? I know the plans that I have for you, plans to, you know, prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. It's like, yes. No, I don't want you to look at verse 11. I want you to look at verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. How about that? God says, the boot of the oppressor is on your neck and I put it there. So much for this woke ideology, this liberation ideology that says that God is always on the side of the oppressed. Nope. Sometimes God is using the oppressor to oppress the oppressed because of sin. There is no always. Amen, somebody. There is no always. But when it comes to his covenant people, he remembers his covenant. And we need to be reminded of that in the midst of our work day, worst days. We cry out to God and we remind ourselves that he hears us. And that even in our worst days, we're in communion with the holy God of the universe, the God who created the world and everything in it. And that he remembers his covenant and that if we have come to him by faith and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are part of his covenant people. And God remembers his covenant. He never forgets his covenant. He never forsakes his covenant. So you might think that I'm saying that black people are oppressed because God is oppressing us because of sin. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Because, well, one reason, 
being black does not mean you're oppressed, right? Now, black people may experience oppression and have experienced oppression at different times in different places, but just being black does not mean you're oppressed. And actually, I live in the United Kingdom. I am not oppressed. <laughs> I have access to the same healthcare system, the same education system, pay the same taxes as everybody else, regardless of their skin color. And many people in the UK, many social justice activists will try and say, no, there's systemic racism everywhere. And I say, well, if that's the case, then how do you explain the education outcomes where you've got black African kids at the top of education outcomes, and then you've got black Caribbean kids at the bottom of education outcomes. If it's just about color, then why, how, how does that seem to make sense? So I think that I, the whole idea of black people being universally oppressed just breaks down. And in the US, it's exactly the same thing, in my humble opinion. So no, I'm not saying that black people are, are oppressed just because they're black. And I'm not saying that black people are oppressed because of sin. What I'm saying is that God is not for the oppressed just because God, or just because they are oppressed. God is for God's people. And sometimes they may be oppressed, but God will ultimately liberate them. Here's the important thing. It's important to remember that because God is for God and his people, our job as Christians is not to look for whoever's oppressed according to other people's definition of oppression and focus all our attention there, nor is our job to try and raise money to pay for historic wrongs, things that other people did hundreds of years ago and continue atoning for those sins. Our job as Christians is to be ministers of reconciliation. The sin that separates us from God is dealt with only by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So our job is to focus on bringing that gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody, whether you're Jew or whether you're Gentile, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're yellow, whether you're no matter what you are, our job as Christians is to represent the gospel and bring the gospel to you for your eternal salvation. And it seems as though the Church of England and many other churches have lost sight of that. So they spend so much more time focusing on trying to be relevant by addressing social issues. That's why you've got the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Church of England. You've got him focusing on housing issues and housing policy and advising government on all sorts of things. Just preach the gospel. Meanwhile, you've got female bishops running wild in the Church of England and you've got LGBT bishops running wild in the Church of England and there's a divide and people are not holding fast to the word of God. And you're wasting time focusing on, you know, especially when the Church of England, as many churches, many denominations are declining. I saw an article the other day where somebody suggested that the way we get more people back into the Church of England is by using the cathedrals and churches to host parties. Let's have a silent disco where everybody's dancing with their headphones in and that's going to bring people back. No! <laughs> what we need, what we don't need is people to return to churches. What we need is revival in the heart. And that only comes through the gospel message. That's why our mission, our focus as believers has to be to know the gospel, to experience the transforming power of Jesus in our lives, then to demonstrate that love in our families so that our communities will see that they'll be gripped by it and his Holy Spirit will draw people to him. The true gospel is ultimately what saves and ultimately what we should focus on. You may not be confident in articulating what that true gospel is, or you might just really want to enjoy hearing it preached again and again and again. And if that is the case, then check out this video because I know it will bless you. I will see you there. Peace and blessings.